The Ibanez Tube Screamer is one of the most popular overdrive pedals of all time, and it's been used in all different kinds of music from blues to heavy metal. So today we're going to be going over a set of mods that I like to do here at Fuzz Lord that makes the Tube Screamer have more headroom, be a little less compressed, and give it a little more low end. So get your tools ready, grab your Tube Screamer, we're going to get started right now. <laughs> So we're going to do three simple mods today. We're going to be adding asymmetrical diode clipping, which is going to give us more headroom, make the pedal less compressed sounding, and it's really going to be able to drive our amps better. Most people that use tube screamers use them as a boost to push their amps or other pedals harder. So this is going to be a mod that's really going to help with that to drive your other pedals or your amps harder and into more saturation. So the second mod we're going to do is change out a capacitor that changes the frequency response of the soft clipping gain stage. A common complaint about tube screamers is that they really lose a lot of low end. So this mod is going to help us fatten up the sound a bit. The last mod we're gonna do is change out a resistor that also works in conjunction with that cap to set the frequency response. So it's going to help park the frequency response and it's also going to set the maximum gain just a little bit higher. I know most people use the Tube Screamer as like a boost pedal to drive other stuff, but I know there's some people out there that really like to use that gain control, and I think this one's gonna give just a little extra bite to the pedal. So before we get started on these mods, I just wanted to say thank you for watching the Fuzz Lord FX YouTube channel. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos that we put out every single week. And if you want to keep up with me on a daily, check out the Instagram page at FuzzlordFX or FuzzlordFX.com to see what kind of pedals we have. And also a big thanks to all of our Patreon supporters that help run this channel. So let's go over everything we're going to use today in this video. First of all, we need an Ibanez Tube Screamer. I've got a TS9, brand new off the shelf, very affordable pedal and a great basis to start modding pedals. So we're also gonna need a soldering iron, some wire cutters, some solder, and a solder sucker or a solder wick would be really helpful to have for this. But if you don't have one, you can still do the mods without one, no problem. If you're curious to know what kind of tools and stuff I'm using, my soldering station, things like that, I'm gonna leave links in the description to the soldering iron I use, a cheaper version that you might like if you're in the market for one, the wire cutters, and I'll even leave a link to the solder that I like to use. Let's start off by adding the asymmetrical diode clipping to the Tube Screamer. This is going to be what is gonna increase our output volume, make the pedal less compressed sounding, like less like squished on the when we start using the gain, and it's gonna help drive our other pedals and amps harder, which is gonna sound really good, and I think a lot of people are really gonna like this sound. If we take a quick look at the Tube Screamer schematic, we have two diodes oriented in different directions, and that is part of our negative feedback loop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of the diodes, it doesn't matter which one, and we're just gonna clip it, and then we're gonna solder in another diode. So the end result will be that on one side, we'll have two diodes going back to back, and then the other side, we'll have one diode. All right, here we go. We've got our TS9, and we're gonna go ahead and open it up. So you gotta remove the little battery compartment to get to the lower screws that hold the back panel in. There is one screw on the back of the circuit board that helps hold it in place. So we're gonna remove that one also. And now we can actually just lift up our circuit board just like that. If we look on the circuit board right here, we can see that op amp right there. This is a JRC 4558D. So a good op amp for the circuit. And if we look really close in there, Next to this orange cap, next to pins one and two on the op amp, there's two little diodes. You gotta be mindful of which way the band is facing uh, and refer to the schematic on that one. But we want to add in one more diode in series with one of the diodes to make it asymmetrical clipping, which will increase the output volume. I'm gonna snip this lead of the diode and then I'm just going to solder in another one with it and kind of like do like a J hook connection. So I'm gonna come in here. This is the black band side of the diode with a lead coming out and I'm gonna snip it and I'm leaving a little extra room on both sides 
of the lead so I can make a little connection. So we're gonna prep this new diode that we're gonna install. This is a standard silicon 1N914 diode. We're gonna clip off the leg, make it shorter on the side that does not have the black band, and we're connecting that to the black band side of the first diode. I'm gonna take my pliers and make like a little hook at the end so I can like make a good physical connection to the lead that we got sticking up in the air. So I'm gonna take the little J hook end of this diode and I'm gonna hook it into the little J hook end of that diode. I snipped the old diode just a little past where it bent so it kind of has a little hook built into it. So let me just get that crimped. Grab some solder and I'm gonna go ahead and sneak in here and make that little connection. All right, so now that we got the first leg hooked up, you're just kind of going to bend the other side down and you can either make a little J hook, which will work great, and bend it around the old lead on the board. Or if you want to, you could remove the old lead and then insert the diode through the board. The reason I like doing this is because when you leave yourself a little bit of lead, it's really obvious to see where it is you are working. All right, so I'm going to solder in that into the diode. Adding this extra diode into the circuit is going to make the output volume louder and make it less compressed sounding. So let's hear a quick clip of the Fuzzler Doom Screamer because it has a toggle on it that switches back and forth between the stock symmetrical clipping of a tube screamer and asymmetrical clipping. Uh, my buddy Eric Marrow did a demo on his channel for the Fuzzler Doom Screamer. We're going to listen to a quick little clip just so that you can get an idea of what it is we're doing to this pedal. The stock tube screamer has the op amp set to where it starts amplifying frequencies above about 720 hertz. This is why the tube screamer has so little low end and it's so mid focused. The second mod we're gonna do is change out a capacitor that is in the negative feedback loop of the op amp gain stage. We're going to take out this capacitor. I'm gonna show it to you on the schematic. The stock cap is a 0.047 microfarad cap and it works in conjunction with that 4K7 resistor next to it to set the frequency response at the gain stage. The first thing we're gonna do is swap out that 0.047 cap to a 0.1 microfarad cap. By changing the value of that cap, it's going to let a lot more low end get amplified in that op amp gain stage, which is gonna give us more bass in the circuit. Between the resistor and that cap, we're going to wind up with a frequency response for that gain stage of about 482 hertz versus the stock frequency response of that gain stage of 720 hertz. Just to give your ears an idea of what we're doing, I'm gonna use a signal generator and play a tone for you that's 720 hertz. And then we're gonna lower that to 482 hertz to give you a representation of the mod. So it's letting more bass in, but it's not adding so much bass in that it's gonna make it muddy sounding, and I think everyone's really gonna like the way this sounds. This capacitor right here, this little green one, this side of it will connect to pin two of the op amp. You can use your multimeter to test that. So you find the bottom of the pad, which is right here, and then you check it against pin two of the op amp. Yep, that is indeed the right cap. So now what we're gonna do is remove this cap. I like to just go in and heat up one leg and you just kind of pull that side of the cap up. I'll show you from this side now. You heat up. So one of the legs is already kind of sticking out. You just come in and heat up the other side of the leg, pull it, boom. Your cap is now out. Now it's decapitated. I got lucky on one of them and my hole for the solder is open, but the other one isn't. So I'm gonna come in here with my solder sucker from the top of the board, heat up that pad, 
Boom. Now we have open holes on the board and we can stick stick in our 100 nanofarad cap, or you can call it a, it's a 0 0.1 microfarad. Bend the leads over just like that, just so it stays in place while you solder. Yeah, there's one. Be sure to use a fan or something when you're soldering. All right, so that's our second mod. Let's go ahead and do the final mod. Then the last thing we're gonna do is change out a resistor that's gonna increase the maximum gain just a little bit. And it's also going to fine tune that frequency that uh, we adjusted with that capacitor. So that resistor is gonna increase the overall maximum gain if we roll the gain all the way up. And it's also going to fine tune that frequency that the op amp gain stage starts amplifying at. Between this resistor and then the cap that we just did, we've dialed in the frequency response of this op amp gain stage to start amplifying at about 482 Hertz, which is going to be more bass than what we're used to, but not so much that it muddies up the sound. So what you need to do is look on the schematic and you need to figure out, remember this lower side of the cap hooked to pin two of the op amp. The upper side of the cap is gonna hook to this resistor right here, and then the other end of that resistor goes to ground. It's a 4K7 resistor. So I'm actually gonna do the same thing here again, and I'm gonna pull this cap out of the board. Or I'm sorry, this resistor out of the board. So I heat up one side and I just pull that leg out. There it is halfway out. Then I'm gonna come here, desolder the other side, pull it out. One of the holes, just like last time, is cleared. One of them still has solder in it. So I'm gonna come from the top with my solder sucker, heat up the connection, solder socket. Now we're gonna take our new 3.3K resistor, and we're gonna install it in the location that this one was at, which is right here. And we're gonna come to the bottom of the board again, bend those leads left and right, just so that they can like, stay still, so we can go like that. And we're gonna solder one. Actually, this is the kind of fan y'all should be using for this. I'll leave a link in the description. If y'all are soldering mod pedals, you should have one. All right, we're gonna clip the leads. All right, cool. So if you've done those three things, I think you're really gonna like the way your Tube Screamer sounds now. It's going to have more output volume. It's gonna be less compressed. I like to use them at very low gain settings like this, but if you want to use the high gain settings, it's gonna have just a little extra bite and it's gonna sound more overdriven because we're also letting more bass into the signal. Let's just plug in this tube screamer, hear what it sounds like real quick. And I'm curious to know when you got your first tube screamer, like where you got it at, how you like to use your tube screamer or other overdrive pedals that you really like. So drop a comment below. We're gonna switch over and hear what the sounds like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we'll be back with another set of mods for this pedal. And eventually we're gonna do a nice like AB, like shootout between a stock TS9 and what we've been working on. I'm Jason from Fuzzler Effects. I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and if you did like it, be sure you share it with a friend that is into music gear also. 
Again, drop that comment below. I'm always curious to know where you're watching from, how long you've been playing tube screamer pedals or like how old you were when you got your first one. Just curious to hear your stories about tube screamers. Also, I wanted to give a big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters that help make this channel possible. I really appreciate each and every one of you, and if you want to know more about supporting the channel, you can hit the link in the description to our Patreon page. One last thing before we wrap it up, just want to give a big thank you to the producer level Patreon supporters that really go the extra mile and contribute to the channel. So that is Jeremy, Milo, David, Troy, Rustin and Steve from Does It Noom. Really appreciate you folks. I look forward to talking to you in the comments and I will see you next week.